Hello, everybody. This is Paul Neeson with Torah Life Ministries. Thank you for joining me. We are reading Leviticus chapter 8, continuing to read the Bible live every single day. My goal is to read every single word of the scriptures uh, to give us all a clearer, better understanding of what the words of our Creator is saying. And uh, we've already read all through the books of Genesis and uh, Exodus, and now we're up to the book of Leviticus. And we've read uh, read many other books, and you can see them on the website, TorahLifeMinistries.org. So we are up to, uh, right now, uh, Leviticus 8. But before we do that, I want to do the Shema, which is found in Deuteronomy 6, 4, and 9, to open up in prayer. So, Shema Yisrael, Yahweh Eloheinu, Yahweh Echad, Baruch Shem Kavu, Mahu Tov, Leolam Va'ed. Hero Israel, Yahweh is our Elohim. Yahweh is one. Blessed is the name of his glorious kingdom for all eternity. Amen. Hallelujah. So, uh, so we're going to continue to read about the priest and the tabernacle and the sacrifices and the offerings. And the last a couple of chapters, which were the first chapters of the book of Leviticus and the Levitical priesthood, we were reading about the, 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 the offerings uh, that the people made on behalf of what it was they did. And there were several different offerings. And now we're getting into the priest garments and the priest in general, which we already already covered in the book of Exodus. You can go back and, and review those. But before we do that, I have my James Moffat scriptures here that goes in more order of the way the scriptures should be. And there's just one note of difference here that I noticed. And that is, it goes through everything okay, but for some reason it skips verse 11. And I don't know where it placed verse 11. We'll have to look later on in the chapter to see, or later on, but it's not in this chapter, verse 11. So it goes verse 10, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Everything else is in order. But verse 11, they pulled out and they put it somewhere else. And uh, as we continue, we'll see where I haven't found it yet, where they put it. But uh, that's the only changer if you're following along in that. Now we're going to be reading today the One New Man Bible and also the uh, the living New Living Testament. Uh, it's the two different scriptures we'll be reading today of Leviticus. So... Starting off here, instructions for the priest. Now, let me just say that the, the priest were the ones that went to Yahweh for the people. See, originally Yahweh wanted uh, Israel to be a nation of priests, but they were too scared. They were too uh, faithless, and they didn't understand the importance of that. I mean, you have the opportunity to be one-on-one -on -one with Yahweh, and you're going to say somebody else to intervene. Something was uh, still stuck in them. Uh, that wasn't making them think straight. Uh, but uh, Yahweh provided the, the priesthood, the priest, to come before uh, them uh, instead of the people, to come before him. And uh, so that's where we're at, and that's who the, the tribe of Levi is. That's what they call Levitical, the Levitical priesthood, or the book called Leviticus. There's still 12 sons to Israel, and one of them was Levi. And when Yahweh uh, set them all apart, he, he, he allotted them all land. But he said here, the tribe of Levi is going to be different and set apart. And uh, they're not going to get a plot. They're going to get, they're going to be the representatives of, of, of him. And they're going to be a holy and set apart tribe. And, and that's where we are in the book of Leviticus explaining about that tribe. Now, you have the tribe which is set apart, the Levitical tribe or the Levi tribe. But then you have the priest, and they're not necessarily the same. Not all people from the tribe of Levi were priests. It was only Aaron and his sons that were the priests, and Aaron was the, the high priest. So if you trans translate that to today's time, it's almost like you have the president and the vice president, the speaker of the house. These were the, the political part of the family. But then you have a whole bunch of other family members that are still uh, set apart and different than the average person. But they weren't in the political system, so to say. They were the workers, the workers, the support in the political system. Uh, and then you had people supporting them, and that was the goal. So with that in mind, here we go. We're looking at the uh, uh, the more information about, about the priest, the instructions of the priest, the orientation of the priest. It says in verse 1, it says, Yahweh said to Moses, 
bring Aaron and his sons along with their sacred garments, the anointed oil, the bull for the sin offering, two rams, and the basket of bread made without yeast, and the entire community of Israel together at the entrance of the tabernacle. So this was a big meeting they have here. <laughs> so bring all the priests, all the stuff that I, that I discussed with you in the previous chapters, and call the entire community of Israel together at the entrance of the tabernacle. And the way they called the entire community together was they blew a, a, a giant shofar blast. And everyone knew this was important. Something was about to happen. And, and so that's what they did here. And... So here they were. He was calling them all to the to the front of the tabernacle. And now there's some notes here that I want to get into. The first one said, Why did Aaron and his sons need to be cleansed and set apart? Although the, the, the men from the tribe of Levi were dedicated for service to Yahweh, only Aaron's descendants could be priests. They alone had honor and the honor and responsibility of uh, performing the sacred uh, sacrifices. Uh, these priests had to cleanse and dedicate themselves before they could help the people of uh, the people and do the same. So they were they were set apart, and this was their goal. This was it was only Aaron's sons. It says the ceremony described in, in Leviticus eight and nine uh, were was or, an, their orientation ceremony. Aaron and his sons were washed with water, clothed with special garments, and anointed with oil. They placed their their hands on the young bull as it was killed and on the two rams as they were killed. This showed that the that holiness came from uh, Yahweh alone, not from the penalty, not from the, not from the priestly role. So holiness came from Yahweh, not from the priestly role. You know, so, so they needed sacrifice to be made for even them. And it says here, <clears throat> similarly, we are not uh, spiritually cleansed because we have a, a religious position, a reputation or title. Spiritual cleansing comes only from Yahweh, no matter how high our position is or how long we have held it. We must depend on Yahweh for spiritual uh, vitality. And then verses 2 and 3, which we're going to continue reading, uh, there's some more notes. Uh, but I want you all to get a gist of this, because this is what most people skip or go over or go past, and they miss this. And why is this so important? Because it's all pointing to our priest today. This is no uh, Levitical priesthood with Aaron and the temple standing today. So all of this today is pointing to uh, our, our, our priest in the future, which is our priest who is today, Yeshua Messiah. So verse 2, why were the priests needed in Israel? Uh, in Exodus 19.6, the Israelites were instructed to be a kingdom of priests. Ideally, they would all be holy and relate to Yahweh. But from the time of Adam's fall, Sin has separated humans from Yahweh, and people have needed mediators to help them find forgiveness. At first, the patriarchs, heads of the households, like Abraham and Job, were priests of the house uh, or clan and made sacrifices for the family. When the Israelites left Egypt, the descendants of Aaron from the tribe of Levi were chosen to serve as priests for the nation. The priests stood in the gap between Yahweh and the people. They were the full-time spiritual leaders and overseers of offerings. The priestly system was a uh, concession to the people's inability because of sin to confront and relate to Yahweh individually and corporately. In Yeshua Messiah, this is perfect. a perfect system was translated. Yeshua himself is our high priest. Now all believers approach Yahweh through him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So that's... Uh, so important to understand, and we're going to see what the priest did and, 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 and just see more of Yeshua in them. Verse 4, so Moses followed Yahweh's instructions, and the whole community uh, assembled at the tabernacle entrance. Moses uh, announced to them, 
And this is what Yahweh has commanded us to do. And then he presented Aaron and his sons and washed them with water. He put the official tunic upon Aaron and tied the sash around his waist. He dressed him for the uh, in the robe and placed the ephod on him and attached the ephod securely with its uh, decorative sash. And then Moses placed the chest piece on Aaron and put the Urim and Thurman inside it. And uh, all of this that we're reading now, we already read in Exodus in the making of these items. But now we are here. You have everything set and ready to go. Dress rehearsal is done. The whole show is together. The audience is there. And this is the main event. This is the show. This is opening night of the show. And uh, just, uh, just a note here. Uh, in, in verse 8, uh, it says here. Well, verse 7, the garment was translated tunic, did not resemble the Greek and Roman tunics. The garment became the prayer shawl and is described in Deuteronomy 22.12 as a blanket. And then in verse 8 it says, The Urim pronounced Urim referred to light and the Thurim uh, to be made perfect. These two objects were the name uh, with the names of Yahweh on each in order to bring his plan to light. So nobody knows exactly what the Thurim and, and, and Thumper were for. Or oh, they knew it was for it was for the to, to tell Yah's decision in certain things, but nobody knew completely 100% about them. So there's speculation about what exactly these 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 things were, and and that's what the next note says in the New Living Testament. Here it says, "What were the Urim and Thurman? Little is known about them, but they were very, uh, probably precious stones or, or flat objects that Yahweh used to give guidance to his people." The high priest kept them in a pocket attached to its chest piece. Some scholars think the Urim may have been uh, the, uh, the no answer and the Durham the yes answer. After a time of prayer and guidance, the priest would shake the stones and Yahweh would uh, cause the proper one to fall out. Another view is that the Urim and Durham were small flat objects, each with a uh, yes side and a no side. The priest spilled both. Uh, from his pouch, both landed on our yes sides. Yahweh's answer was the yes position. Two sides, no, then negative. And yes and no meant no reply. Yahweh had specific purposes for using this method of guidance. He was teaching us a nation, a principles to following him. Our situation is the same today. How it is not the same, however. So we must invent ways like this for Yahweh's to guide us. Well, now this is what we have prayer for, hopefully, and uh, we have a good relationship with Yahweh. But, but back then, this is what the priests were doing. They were certainly praying, but, but they were they were using these stones or whatever they were to determine their yes and no answer. So was, again, the speculation of what these might have been, uh, but not one clear answer or clear understanding by, by the so-called scholars. Which I'm not necessarily saying. Uh, Listen to the scholars. You don't have to be a scholar to understand the scriptures, but it's the idea of it that people don't necessarily agree on, on this thing here. So, uh, continuing in verse eight, uh, then Moses placed it. Uh, well, we got to verse eight, verse nine. He placed a turban on Aaron's head and attached a gold medallion, uh, the badge of holiness, in the front of the turban, just as Yahweh had commanded him. And uh, when we speak about a turban, it was literally a turban with a gold medallion on the front. And we identify something like this as uh, we, we identify something like this as uh, somebody from another culture or something else. You know, or even if you see a woman with a, not only a head covering, but a whole a, a Pacific head covering, we identify that with uh, uh, from someone of another another type of uh, people. But these all stem from Israel. And this is how they were to dress. And then you see the Hajib, for example. That didn't start with the Muslim nation. That started with, with the Jewish people. Uh, and it started with Yahweh's people. And then it went to the Catholic people. And then it caught on with the Muslim people. And now if you want one of those, you consider Muslim, but the Jewish is where it started. So, so, and the same thing with the turban. Now you got Indians and, 
and Sikhs wearing turbans, but it started right here with the priest. So, uh, you know, a lot of things that started with them were, were, were taken and, and, and rightfully used today in other cultures, but the bit of people following the Bible got away from it. And uh, it's a people's lack of understanding of, of history. That's why we're doing these understandings of the scriptures and reading these different things. So uh, verse 10, then Moses took the anointing oil and anointed the tabernacle and everything in it, making them both holy. He sprinkled the oil on the altar seven times, anointing it and its utensils as well as the wash bin and its stand, making them holy. And then he poured some of the anointing oil on Aaron's head, anointing him and making him holy for work. Well, uh, it says here in the note, uh, what was the significance of anointing Aaron as a high priest? The high priest had specific duties that no other priest had. He alone could enter the most holy place in the tabernacle on the same annual day of atonement to atone for the sins of the nation. Therefore, he was in charge of all the other priests. The high priest was a picture of Yeshua our Messiah, who is our high priest today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So it's a set apart of the set apart. That's basically what you get. And uh, that's who what Aaron was. And, 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 and the oil that was used to cleanse everything uh, cleansed also Aaron. So when you went and presented yourself uh, to our Creator, yes, you might come in as a as a, uh, a dirty sinner, but what He's going to do is He's going to cleanse you with His oil, and that's the blood of Yeshua today. That's that's the uh, uh, cleansing oil that we have, the blood of Yeshua that was shed when Yeshua died for us, and uh, Yeshua being a high, high, high priest cleansing us, and uh, we see Aaron here being uh, cleansed by Moses. So keep that in mind. Uh, next. Moses uh, presented Aaron's sons. They clothed them with their tunics, their sashes around them, and put their special head coverings on them, just as Yahweh had commanded him. And a lot of people will read uh, certain scriptures and certain things, and they'll say, well, like, for example, no man should pray with his head covered. Well, then you read something like this, and you see, well, you know, people just want to pick and pull and move things out of a way. Scripture says, scripture is clear. And any man could have a prayer shawl or even one of these tunics or something on his head. Folks, prayer comes from the heart. It's not about the head. But he wants us to get and be in a certain place. He wants to be under his ultimate covering. And he wants us to pray. Uh, but we can't get sidetracked with all these, these orders, commands, and ideas that our creator gives us that people twist around and turn around. We got to stick to our creator's words, guidelines, and instructions. Hallelujah. All right, let's uh, move along here to verse 14. Verse 14, we'll move along here. It says, Then Moses presented the bull for the sin offering, and Aaron and, and his sons laid their hands on the bull's head, and Moses slaughtered it. Moses took some of the blood. So it says Moses slaughtered it. So not it wasn't the high priest here. It was Moses that slaughtered it, and took some of the blood with his right finger, uh, with, well, with his finger, he put it on the four corners of the altar to purify it. He poured out the rest of the blood at the base of the altar. Though the, through the process, he made the altar holy by purifying it. And then Moses took all the fat around the internal organs, the long lobe, the liver, and the two kidneys, and the fat around them, and he burnt them all up in the altar. He took the rest of the bull, including its hide meat, dung, and buried it out in a fire outside the camp, on a fire, outside the camp, just as Yahweh had commanded him. So Moses was doing things just as Yahweh had commanded. Not more, not less, but just as, as, as he was commanded to do so. And that is key. All these instructions in the building of the tabernacle, and now the sacrificial system and what was taking place here with the offerings. We need to follow his instructions, folks. And he's given us instructions his life. So even though Yeshua is our high priest today, that doesn't mean we don't listen to the instructions. That means we should desire even more to listen to the instructions, to continue to follow the pattern of Yahweh. That's why we need to do that. And unfortunately, so many people get away from that today and it's created this big problem. Uh, verse 18, Then Moses presented the ram for the burnt offering. Aaron and his sons laid their hands on a ram's head, and Moses slaughtered it. Then Moses took the ram's blood 
and splattered it against all sides of the altar. Then he cut the ram into pieces, and he burned the head, some of the pieces, and the fat on the altar. After washing the internal organs of the, and the legs in water, Moses burned the entire ram on the altar as a burnt offering. It was a pleasing aroma uh, gift presented to Yahweh, just as Yahweh had commanded him. And, uh, and we go here to this note here. Let's see. This offering completed the installation of the priests. And then for verse 23, it says, The right ear symbolizes listening to Yahweh, the dumb and big toe service of mankind. The dumb and the big toe is the service that listens to. So we're going to be reading that now. It says uh, in verse 22, then Moses presented the other ram, which was the ram of orientation. Uh, Aaron and his sons laid their hands on the ram's head, and Moses slaughtered it. Then Moses took some of his blood and applied it to the lobe of Aaron's right ear, thumb and his right hand and the big toe of his right foot. Now, this might seem like something very insignificant and, and, and people not understanding why this would happen, of taking the blood and putting it on the right ear. Or putting the blood on the thumb and the foot and so on. We just explained it. Uh, the ear, hearing from Yahweh, the right ear, that's what this symbolized. And then we have the service, uh, uh, putting it on the hand and the service that was connected to it. Every single thing in Yahweh's word is there for a reason, no matter how crazy it seems. We need not to get away from that idea. We need to understand that. We need to understand that. So... Uh, Hold on here. Uh, okay, so continuing with the reading here now. Let's see. All right, so continuing here, we're up to... Verse 23, and Moses slaughtered them, and Moses took some of his blood and applied it to the lobe of Aaron's right ear, the thumb in his right hand, and the big toe of his right foot. Next, Moses presented Aaron's sons and applied some of the blood to the lobes of their right ears, thumbs and the right hands and big toes and right feet. He then splattered the rest of the blood against the sides of the altar. So he, he then splattered the rest of the blood on the sides of the altar. And, uh, and remember, this was Moses doing this. And uh, let's see. <laughs> All right. Okay, so verse 25. Next, Moses took the fat, including the fat of the broad tail and the fat around the internal organs the long lobe of the liver and the two kidneys and the fat around them along with the right thigh. On top of this, he placed a thin uh, a cake of bread made without yeast, a cake of bread mixed with olive oil and water spread with olive oil. All these were taken from the basket of bread made without yeast. This was placed in Yahweh's presence. He put all these in the hands of Aaron and his sons and he lifted these gifts up as a special offering to Yahweh. Moses then took all the offerings back from them and burnt them on the altar on the top of the burnt offering. This was the orientation offering. It was pleasing aroma to the special gift presented to Yahweh. So whenever you have a building or something that's uh, a special government building, what do they have? They have the opening ceremony with the cutting of the ribbon. That's in essence, what we have here, we have the original sacrifices. We have the, the dress rehearsal is over. This is the show starting. All of Israel is there. And this is what's being done. So everyone will know. And Moses is the one doing it with Aaron and his sons right there. Uh, just instilling Yahweh's plan and pattern into action. Then Moses took the breast and lifted it up as a special offering to Yahweh. This was Moses' portions of the ram of, of orientation just as Yahweh had commanded him. Next, Moses 
took some of the anointed oil and some of the blood that was on the altar and sprinkled them on Aaron and his garments and on his sons and their garments. In this way, he made Aaron and his sons and their garments holy. Then Moses said to Aaron and his sons, boil the remaining meat of the, uh, of the offerings at the tabernacle entrance and eat it there, along with the bread that is in the basket of offerings for the orientation, just as I commanded when I said, Aaron and his sons will eat it. Any meat or bread that is left over must then be burned up. You must not leave the tabernacle entrance for seven days, for that is when the orientation ceremony will be completed. Everything we have done today was uh, commanded by Yahweh in order to purify you, making you right with him. And that is my scripture of the day right there, which is going to be verse 34. Uh, verse 34 says, everything we have done today was commanded by Yahweh in order to purify you, making you right with him. And that is what we could say with the sacrifice of Yeshua or the offering by Yahweh of Yeshua. This was uh, 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 by, done by Yahweh in order to purify us, making us right with him. So, so Yeshua is all over these, these, these scriptures. And, 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 and this was all about Yeshua right here, making us right with him, purifying us and making us right with him. Now stay at the entrance of the tabernacle for uh, seven days and do everything Yahweh requires. If you fail to do this, you will die. So do everything that our creator requires or the penalty is death. And, uh, and for this is what Yahweh has commanded. So Aaron and his sons did everything Yahweh commanded them through Moses. Well, sure, good thing they did because uh, the penalty of that was not something that uh, it, it was death, as it says here. So and then let's continue with this last note here, 37. Well, that was uh, 8. Well, that's good. That's good. All right. So there we go. So that is uh, chapter Leviticus 8. And continuing with Leviticus, Leviticus 9. And on our, again, our verse of the day was everything uh, we did here today was com uh, commanded by Yahweh in order to purify you, making you right with him. Hallelujah. So uh, as we continue to read these different uh, scriptures, hopefully we're getting a clear idea of what our, our creator wants us to do. And, and how he wants us to live. And, 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 and I pray that people are seeing the significance in this and not just skipping over this and going to, uh, to a different, uh, different uh, book of the Bible without trying, uh, you know, without trying to understand this. Because again, to understand a creator, you have to understand the Torah, but the all Torah, not just some of the Torah. Uh, and, and that is imperative to know. So until then, everybody, uh, please uh, pray, praise, proclaim, read, and repent, submit. Post this below the, the video so let other people know that we're, we're reading these live every single day or even if you're watching the replay. And uh, and and thank you again, uh, everybody, for joining us. And we'll be back tomorrow tomorrow morning. We had a little early start today. Uh, so uh, <laughs> sorry about that. But uh, I didn't want to just uh, hang around here and just wait. I, wanted, I was excited to get the word out. But you can watch the replay if you missed some of it. All right, everybody. Uh, have a great day and shalom, shalom.